guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abigail Flowers and I'm a jazz vocalist and Lanakai ukuleles artist living in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I want to do a short video about chord spelling. There's a good chance you have a number of chord shapes memorized on your ukulele. You probably know G and C and D, maybe E minor. But do you understand why a G chord is a G chord? Do you understand why a C chord is shaped that way? That's what I'm gonna talk about for a few minutes today. So first of all, you need to get familiar with the names and order of notes or pitches in music. Notes like A and B and C and so on and so forth. Those letters are the names that we've given to particular frequencies. Not to go too far back into middle school science class, but a sound wave's frequency is what makes it really high or really low. My voice doesn't actually go that low, but... So for example, the frequency of 440 hertz is the note A. That A is called A4. There's another A at twice that frequency, or 880 hertz, and at half that frequency, 220 hertz, and so on and so forth. So there are a few ways to think about the order of the note names. The first is alphabetical. You start with A and you go through G and then you start over again. Some of the notes have sharps and flats between them. Sharp means raise the pitch one half step. Flat means lower the pitch one half step. And a half step just means one key on a piano or one fret on a ukulele. You can also think of the order of notes as starting with C, so it would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C. That's a common way to think of things if you grew up playing piano like I did, because oftentimes the first note we're taught is to find middle C on a piano. So here's an image of a piano keyboard which shows you all the note names in one octave. You'll notice that some notes have two names. The note that's one half step above C can be called C sharp or D flat. It could be called D flat because it's one half step below D, and it could be called C sharp because it's one half step above C. You could also visualize the order of notes like a ladder where each rung is one half step. So you might start with C, and then the next rung is C sharp or D flat, the next rung is D, and so on and so forth. The last image I'll show you is of a wheel. If you follow the wheel clockwise, it shows you the names of the notes in ascending order, so from low to high. If you follow the wheel counterclockwise, it'll show you the names of the notes in descending order, or from high to low. So now let's get to the chord spelling. Each chord is made up of a unique combination of notes. For example, G major is spelled G, B, D. So we'll look at each string on our baritone ukulele and figure out which open strings belong and which strings need to be altered to fit the chord. So our first string is a D. That belongs in the chord. Our second string is a G, and that belongs in the chord. Third, we have the B string, and that's also in the chord. So if you just played these three strings, that's a G major chord. But what about the E string? That's not G or B or D. So we need to change that string to fit the chord. Now we can only raise the pitch. We can't go any lower than an E on the E string without tuning down. And I don't want to do that in the middle of a song. So we'll try each fret until we've got a note that fits in the chord. So we start with our open E string, which we know is not part of the chord. The first fret would be an F because that's a half step above E. That's not in the chord. Next we have F sharp. That's not in the chord. But if we play the third fret, that's a G, which of course is in a G major chord. So now we're playing D, G, B, G. All of the strings are playing notes in the G major chord. Another example would be an E minor chord, which is spelled E, G, B. So our D string, that's not an E, G, or B, so we'll have to change that. But G, B, and 
and E strings can all stay open. So we're just going to change the D string. Our first fret would be D sharp or E flat. And that's not one of the notes we're looking for. So we'll move up to the second fret, and that's an E, which does belong in our chord. So now we're playing E, G, B, E. So that's an E minor chord. Now let's do a really hard one. What if I asked you to play a G sharp minor seven flat five chord? The notes in that chord are G sharp, B, D, and F sharp. So first we need to look at each string and see which ones can stay open to fit our chord. D, that can stay. G, not quite. B, all clear. And E, that'll need some changing. So we're only going to look at our second and fourth strings. We already know that the open G won't do, so we'll try our first fret, G sharp. That was easy. Now we need to find the right note on our E string. So once again, open E, not quite there. Our first fret is an F, not quite. But that second fret is an F sharp and that's in our chord. So we're going to use the first fret of the G string and the second fret of the E string. And that's a G sharp minor seven flat five. Of course, one thing that will make this knowledge much more practical is knowing which notes are in which chords. Honestly, that takes a lot of time to learn, but it's totally worth it. So for now, I'll give you a few chords that you can work on on your own and let me know in the comments when you think you've got it figured out. And we'll talk more about chord spelling in a future video. Real quick, I wanted to let you guys know that I've been nominated for a local award. I was nominated for Best Jazz Vocalist in the 2020 Nashville Industry Music Awards. Voting is open now and it doesn't matter which city you live in and I would love it if you'd take a second to cast a vote for me. All right, here's some homework. Can you find the notes in a D minor 7 flat 5 chord or D half diminished? The notes are D, F, A flat, and C. Don't forget that A flat can also be called G sharp. Next, why don't you work on a D sus chord? The notes in a D sus chord are D, G, and A. This one will be a little bit tricky because you have to make sure that all three notes are present in the chord you're playing. Lastly, look for an F sharp minor seven chord. The notes in that chord are F sharp, A, C sharp, and E. That's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching.